Greetings and welcome to this edition of Positronic Hypersonic. I'm Barry P. Cook. I'm here to talk to you about the season four premiere of Harley Quinn. It was a three episode premiere, an hour and a half. That's crazy. Anyway, the first of the three episodes was called Gotham's Hottest Hotties. And as it starts, Lex Luthor is off to the moon for some reason, but the Legion of Doom doesn't immediately take to Ivy as CEO or her plan to take a bite out of big oil as part of her overall agenda of socially conscious crime. Harley's first day as part of the Bat family gets off to a slow start, but soon enough, there's a crime that they need to see to, except for Damien, who is taken by Alfred to see Bruce in Blackgate, where he wound up at the end of last season, and where apparently he has a new butler in his very posh accommodations at the prison, who has barred him from actually having any visitors. Ivy ends up approving a bunch of random plans by members of the Legion in order to get them to be less disapproving of her, while Harley investigates the crime with Batgirl after not being able to get any help with any leads from her former colleagues in crime. And it would seem that the perpetrator of the crime in question is Professor Pig. Ivy finds out that the project she approved for Bane without really reading it was that he wanted to blow up the same oil rig she was going to attack, which she ended up actually doing before she got a chance to hit it. So she was quite upset. She then ends up hiring Nora Freeze as her assistant. Meanwhile, Harley gets Nightwing to agree to a live stream sexy photo shoot as a way to lure in Professor Pig who apparently has been kidnapping and killing Gotham's hottest high-profile residents, and successfully gets him to show up, at which point he does indeed knock out and kidnap Nightwing, but not before Nightwing debased himself terribly by getting almost naked and showing off his ass. Anyway, Ivy lays down the law with the Legion and tells them that they're going to do her agenda as a team or there's going to be trouble. Apparently, Professor Pig's been trying to build an aesthetically perfect person, and he's been kidnapping and killing off all of these people for their body parts. But before he could cut off Nightwing's rear end for this project, Harley bludgeons him to death. As the episode ends, a woman who would appear to be Talia al Ghul is watching the news and decides to take her jet to Gotham. The second episode of the premiere was called B-I-T-C-H, and as it starts, the Bat family has to remind Harley that the Bat family doesn't kill people, which she really should have known because the no-killing mantra was all over the place at the Bat Cave. But she somehow missed it. And when they realize that she's rough around the edges in a few other ways, the Bat family puts her with Alfred as his assistant for some training. It would seem that Ivy's new plan is to bankrupt the pharmaceutical industry, which constantly destroys trees and plants by testing on them, by replacing male trees in the city with female trees, which I didn't even know was a thing, which would destroy the allergy medicine market because only male trees produce pollen. Talia al Ghul shows up and apparently she's in charge of Wayne Enterprises in Bruce's absence and and she says that she needs to cut the bat activities budget a bit. She also gives Ivy a bit of advice about managing Mayor Joker, and it turned out to be quite helpful, but it also turns out that her youth serum is made from plant extract, and this displeases Ivy quite a bit, so she tanks Talia's company, which only makes her respect Ivy for her balls. Speaking of advice, Alfred advises Harley to be a bitch, which stands for breathe, identify the problem, tea break, consider your options, and handle it, which he says should help her show that she can do things the Bat family way. Then they go on a training spree that involves Harley learning how to stunt drive the Batmobile before Alfred attempts to rob a bank, and Harley has to stop him, but apparently he did it because he wants to go to jail where Bruce is, but he ends up going to Arkham instead of Blackgate because apparently Blackgate is for rich people, which he isn't. Harley's reward for taking him down and stopping the crime is that she's let back onto active duty in the Bat family and is given a Bat outfit. The third episode of the premiere was called Icons Only, and as it starts, Harley and Ivy decide to go to Vegas to spend some couple time, which they seem to enjoy well enough, but they can't manage to get tickets to the hottest show in town, which is Clayface's cover concert, because of course it is. Further complicating things is the fact that Harley can't really party down the way she wants to because it would get her in trouble with the Bat family, and she doesn't want to lose her crime-fighting job, so she adopts yet another alter ego, Hargret and gets into shenanigans, including going to the room of a cocaine-based villain under false pretenses to get his Clayface tickets, but it turns out that he doesn't actually have them. So Harley and Ivy try to steal some from a cancer kid in his family, but it turns out that Clayface was impersonating the cancer kid to set a trap for them to catch them trying to get tickets that they said they already had, which he doesn't want them to have because Ivy wouldn't answer his emails previously. And they have a bit of a row over it, which Harley has to put an end to, just before Shark King's wife gives birth right there in the same location. And Harley and Ivy end up becoming their godmothers because they were there when it happened. 
As the episode ends, Harley tells Ivy that she's going to move in with the Bat family, at least for a while, in order to really hone her hero skills. And Ivy lets her know that she's okay with it. So this is a hard show to review because there are so many jokes and so many funny moments and so much crazy stuff that you really have to do it second by second to convey all the funny stuff that happens in these episodes. And there's just no way to take those kind of notes <laughs> to, to, to write down every joke. So the plot recap that I've just done is very basic and leaves out a ton of funny stuff that happens in the episode. Like, you know, the photo shoot where Nightwing is practically naked. Harley is dressed up as a old timey photographer, complete with a handlebar mustache and an ugly sweater. And, you know, she's just saying crazy things to get him to do different poses for the camera. And, you know, there's a bunch of funny stuff with Bane. And, you know, there are moments with the Shark King and his wife that are kind of funny. It's just to get into all that would make the recaps really long and overly detailed. So it might not sound like the show is very good from my recap, but it really is. It's very funny and, you know, off the wall and crazy. And I just enjoy the shit out of it. <laughs> but it's the kind of thing you'd really have to check out for yourself to get all the jokes and, and you know, to experience all the funny moments, but it's it's very funny. And, you know, I'm gonna to continue to watch it and continue to do breakdown and review videos for it and try my best to convey, you know, the funny parts and, and what I like about it. Another thing too, is there's a lot of like cameos from all kinds of comic book characters, classic comic book characters. There's a moment where Captain Boomerang comes up on screen. Captain Cold introduces himself to Nora Freeze and it's kind of funny because she kind of instantly falls for him, which, duh. <laughs> You know, there are tons of characters in the background that don't say anything, but you know who they are from the comics. Gorilla Grodd is in this and he says some funny stuff. And, you know, that stuff goes by like this while the episode is running and it's just impossible to take it all down. So it's just something you really have to watch. And if you're a fan of the Batman universe and, you know, uh, the DC verse, in fact, because it includes characters like I said, Captain Cold and Captain Boomerang, which are Flash villains, then it's something you're really going to like because it's really a love letter to fans of that stuff and it pokes fun at it. And it, it's just, it's a really good, you know, show. And I'm glad it's back for a fourth season. And, you know, I'll be back with more breakdown and review videos for this season as it continues to be released on Max. For now, I'm going to get out of here. But until I return, I wish you peace and long life.